In the previous lesson, I presented you with an idea. I asked you, why is this course called physical science? And I suggested that by understanding physical properties, you can move yourself to a closer understanding about why this is physical science. Do you recall the definition of a physical property of matter? It's a property that can be observed without changing the substance to a different substance, without changing the bonds that hold the very atoms of a substance together. In physical science, what we strive to do is to understand those physical properties, but not just understand what they are. That would be really easy because physical properties are things like the size of a substance, the shape of a substance. And those things don't take a whole lot of work for your brain to comprehend. However, what we try to do in physical science is to understand why substances behave the way they do, have the physical properties that they have, because of the way the atoms that make them up behave and relate to one another and bond to each other. That's what we do in physical science. We attempt to learn how the physical properties of substances are caused by atoms. Now, to understand that, you have to understand a lot about the periodic table of elements and what it tells us about atoms, about the parts that make up atoms, protons, neutrons, and electrons, and what they do and how they behave, the ways that atoms bond together with other atoms. All of that will be coming later on during this course during this year. So for now, what is it that we're going to focus on? We're going to focus on understanding what physical properties are and why they are physical properties. In fact, we're going to take a look at three basic physical properties of matter, starting with the most basic of the three, density. Now, this should be a physical property that you basically understand already. In fact, at this point, you should be able to explain why the atoms of a substance give that substance its density, how the atoms are packed together a certain amount in a certain amount of space, and how there's a certain number of atoms, each with its own mass, contributing to the total mass of the substance. So you have a certain amount of mass and a certain amount of space and that's what density is all about. Of the three physical properties that we're going to be looking at in depth, this is the one that's the most obviously a physical property. Let's learn about how density is a physical property of matter. And we're gonna start with the definition of density once more. Density is the amount of matter in a substance, or the mass, compared to the amount of space that that substance takes up, or the volume. We calculate density by taking the mass divided by the volume. And that tells us how much matter is packed into a certain amount of a substance. That's what density is. Now I want you to think about this. Does measuring the mass or the volume actually change the substance to a different substance? And you may just obviously answer that no, it doesn't change the substance. We're going to take a look at why that is on the atomic level. And we're going to start by taking a look at volume. Measuring volume doesn't actually change a substance to a different substance. We're going to look at one of the substances you might have used in the density lab where you made that density column. Isopropyl alcohol was one of the substances you could have chosen and isopropyl alcohol is an extremely flammable, extremely lightweight substance that honestly doesn't have a whole lot of density compared to other substances. The reason why that is, is because the atoms that make up isopropyl alcohol, and you can see there's a red oxygen atom, three black carbon atoms, and eight white hydrogen atoms pictured. Those atoms all have very low masses. They're way near the top of the periodic table where atoms are very, very light. Also, isopropyl alcohol molecules push each other apart. They sort of repel each other, which gives them a lot of space in between, which means they take up a lot of space, but they don't have a lot of mass. And therefore, they don't have a lot of density either. So this is isopropyl alcohol. Now, what if you wanted to measure the volume and the mass? 
First, let's take a look at what happens when you measure the volume. Let's pour this isopropyl alcohol into a graduated cylinder. All we did was we rearranged where the molecules were. As we poured it from one place to another, we didn't change the molecules into something different. There's still three carbons, one oxygen, and eight hydrogens in each molecule. We just moved them around a little bit. The shape of a substance and the volume of a substance are physical properties of that substance. To observe it, you don't change the substance to a different substance. But what about the mass of the substance? Well, what happens when you measure the mass of isopropyl alcohol? You probably put it in some kind of a container on top of a laboratory balance like this one. And when you do that, once again, you don't change the molecules to something different. They're still bonded together with the exact same atoms the exact same way as they were bonded before. We just moved them around onto a balance. The fact that gravity is pulling downward on them doesn't change what they are. They are still alcohol molecules. Their bonds aren't changing at all. So the measurement of mass and the measurement of volume are both physical properties of a substance and therefore the density is also a physical property of a substance. Here's another thing that you can do with density that is really just observing the physical properties of substances. When you mix substances together, as you did in your density column, to compare the densities doesn't actually change them to different substances. Here I'm going to mix isopropyl alcohol, which has a very, very low density, with olive oil, which has a somewhat higher density, but also pretty low. And here's what's going to happen. I'm going to have my isopropyl alcohol molecules that are exactly the same as they were before, and my olive oil molecules, which didn't change to different substances just because I poured them into a graduated cylinder. Because these are the same molecules I had before, the atoms are bonded the exact same way, I didn't actually change this to a different substance just by mixing these two together to observe their densities. When you observe the different densities of substances and how they stack up, you're observing physical properties. One more thing to consider. What if I took a substance like copper from the earth to the moon? Would I be altering the arrangement of copper atoms and changing it to a different substance so it would no longer be observing a physical property. Well, if I observe the density of copper on Earth and the density of copper on the moon, first of all, you should note the density will stay the same. That difference in gravity isn't enough to either pack the atoms more tightly together or to spread them out further apart. Therefore, since the density stays the same, it should be quite obvious that this is a physical property. But not only that, more important than that, the copper atoms aren't rebonding to change into something else. We're still looking at copper atoms bonded together the exact same way that they were. And therefore, even observing the density in different places in space is still observing physical properties of matter, not chemical properties. So this lesson should have thoroughly proven to you that density is a physical property of matter. We're not changing matter to something different. We're just observing the properties of substances with the atoms staying the exact same way that they are in the exact same arrangements.